In this video, I want to talk to you about inflation, how we measure inflation and why you might care about inflation and the inflation rate. So first, let's familiarize ourselves with some inflation vocabulary. The inf inflation means there is a sustained rise. So for a long enough period of time in the average price level. So relative prices fluctuate day to day, week to week, year to year, but inflation means on average prices are rising and prices rise at the inflation rate, which is the annual percent increase in the price level. Now we don't haven't experienced it very often, but in the United States, we have experienced deflation or a sustained decline in the average price level. Now we want to differentiate deflation from disinflation. Disinflation is a fall in the inflation rate. So let's say the inflation rate is 5% per year. Disinflation might be a fall from 5% to 2%. Now, when we talk about price level, we have to find a way to measure it. And we're gonna measure price level using a price index. And that means we're going to have to choose which price index we want to look at. There are many to choose from, but I'm going to show you two. First, we have the CPI. You might be familiar with the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index is calculated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and this measures the average level of prices of consumer goods based on a basket of goods that are consumed on average by your average household. Now, the GDP deflator, which you may also be familiar with, this is a price index that includes all goods and services included in GDP. And this price index is calculated by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And as you can notice here, these base years are different. So briefly, let's interpret these numbers. Any price index, whether it be the CPI, the GDP deflator, or any different price index can be interpreted as 100 plus the percent difference in price level relative to the base year. So in 1977, the consumer price index number is 62.1. That means prices were lower relative to the base year by about 37.9%. Now, that doesn't really matter for our purpose in this video, but as what we notice here, as the years go on, these numbers get bigger. So that means consumer prices have experienced inflation. And we also look at our GDP deflator. Our base year is different, so these numbers are going to be different. But we see that these numbers also get bigger. The economy is experiencing GDP inflation as well. Now, how do we find the inflation rate? We find the inflation rate by calculating the percent change in a price index number. And we could do that year to year. So let's calculate the inflation rate from 1978 or 77 to 78 using the CPI. So here's our CPI inflation rate over the period 1977 to 78% change. That's about 9.02%. So the inflation rate calculated using the CPI 9.02%. Now I'm not gonna do all these calculations for you, but you can if you like. You'd Calculate the inflation rate 2007 to 2008 using the CPI, you get about 0.1%. You get a slightly different number if you calculate the inflation rate 1977 to 78 using the GDP deflator. All four cases, we have experienced positive inflation. Now, what if we wanted to calculate the inflation rate over a longer period of time, and we only wanted to look at two numbers? We have the numbers for 1978 and the numbers for 2008. This is 30 years in between. So we would find the average growth rate in prices. We would take the value in the later year, divided by the value in the earlier year, raise it to the one divided by number of years, and we would find the average CPI inflation rate as 3.85. Let's do it again. Not exactly the same, but pretty close. And you can see, and if I, I've shown for you here, here is the CPI inflation rate. Here is the GDP inflation rate. They're not quite the same, but the overall trend is similar. We've had an acceleration in the inflation rate over this period. We experienced some disinflation and then stabilizing at rates generally below 3% since the 1990s. What's gonna happen next? 
I can't tell you. Now, why should you care about inflation? You should care about inflation because it erodes the purchasing power of money and fixed income assets. If you were to purchase a 30-year treasury security, you are entering in a contract to receive dollars every year for 30 years. The higher rate of inflation, the lower the purchasing power of those dollars. Now, that's not the only reason we care about inflation. That's a big reason, but it's not the only one. Firms incur costs every time they change prices. We call those menu costs. It's like a restaurant has to make new menus. The grocery store has to reset all the prices. The higher the inflation rate, the more often firms have to do this, and the, cost, the more costly inflation happens to be. Now, households also incur costs. Individuals need to shift their monetary assets to their non-monetary assets. The higher the rates of inflation, the faster you want to get that money out of your checking account. You go to the store more often, you log into your brokerage account, and you buy assets that are protected from inflation. That's not costless. It takes time. There's fees. The higher the rates of inflation, the more often that households have to do this. We call those shoe leather costs because we think about wearing your shoes out, walking out all over town, trying to buy goods and services and get rid of your money. Now, inflation doesn't hurt everybody and it doesn't affect everybody equally. Some people actually benefit and the people that benefit are the borrowers. If you have a large debt with a fixed rate of interest, you might benefit if the inflation rate increases and you might benefit at the expense of the saver. This is sometimes called the inflation tax because we take funds from the saver or the lender and we distribute those to the borrowers or wealth. Now you think, well, maybe that's not a cost, but all taxes in some way are distortionary. So anytime we have a tax, there's gonna be some consequences. There's also a distortion in relative prices. Not all prices change at the same pace. And this uh, confuses consumers and confuses firms, and it may lead to uh, households not making the optimal decisions. The higher the rate of inflation, the worse this gets. So what can we conclude here? Higher inflation, more costs. I hope this video helped you understand how we measure inflation and why we might care about it.